Hello everybody, it's Kate Richburg. I'm scooting over here so I can see you all. It's Kate Richburg and it's time for Free Tip Friday on Beadshop.com. I hope everybody's doing well and everybody has had a fantastic week. We're having a fantastic week here at Beadshop.com. Uh, just a quick, uh, let me jump on and make sure that I can see you guys on my mobile device and it looks like you guys are jumping on as well that's awesome let me get you guys queued up here so I can see everybody's questions and comments and greetings I'm doing that here it should be you should be coming up any second um, today we are going to do some fun there we go I just got the notification, and there we are. All right, I see everybody jumping on. There's a whole bunch of you already. Excellent. Great job. Yes, Tammy, I'm in your chair. That is correct. Um, Tammy was kind enough to come help us do a little bit of packaging here at our offices, our bead shop offices. So yes, Tam, I miss you already. Um, well, it's great to have everybody here. Um, I've got Gita um, doing um, some moderating on the other side of uh, the camera and all the way from Denmark. Thank you, Gita, as always, for um, putting that, uh, doing those links for us. We super appreciate it. And I also wanted to let you guys know real quick, we've got so much going on here. It's been such a busy month, a busy May here, with so many things we've got going on here at beadshop.com. We have a little bit, I wanted to let you guys know, because some of you have been writing in, you're like, where's my order? Well, we're just a couple of days behind. You know, we usually have a three to four day fulfillment window, business day fulfillment window here at beadshop.com. But we are working super, super hard hard um, to get your orders out the door as quickly as we can. So thanks for hanging in with us. You know, we had a couple of sales at the beginning of the month and Janice was here. We had a big birthday sale, all that kind of stuff. So thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support of our small business. We really, really appreciate it. And we'll be back on track super soon. So don't let that uh, deter you from ordering. We promise to get those orders out as quickly as we can. So thank you so much for your patience as always. Um, okay, so let's see who is here and jumping on. Hi everybody, it's great to see you. Um, oh, <laughs> Mimi, you're seeing all of our all of our stuff back here, some of our archive, and I've got all of our projects. You know what, let me turn this around so you guys can kind of see this. It's kind of fun to, you know, we're much more casual on Free Tip Friday. I'm going to turn it around over here. Can you see as I'm turning the camera, can you see, we've got all of our projects. I've got them all archived here in my office. So that's where all of our projects live. They're all archived. And I have um, just some fun things just behind me. Whoops, I don't want to go too far. Just behind me on the wall here. So it's kind of fun to be able to see all of those pieces um, and where we archive all the stuff. The, the bead shop archive. Um, my earrings, thanks you guys for commenting. I'll get a little closer. I'll jump in uh, maybe a little bit or I'll pull them off my ear so you can see them. This was a design that I'm going to uh, re, uh, redo for us here at bead shop. Let's see, there we go. Maybe it's a little close. Let me pull it back. Um, a few years ago, I was, I don't know, wire master of the year or wire designer of the year or something like that for a wire jewelry magazine uh, which unfortunately is no longer um, uh, being published. It was published by Interweave Press um, but you can go on to Interweave Press in their archive if you search maybe projects by Kate Richburg. This might still come up. Um, essentially, it's just a wireframe that I made and I embellished with some Swarovski crystals. So it's kind of fun. I used some 18 gauge, I think, uh, and maybe some 16 gauge for these. Um, but I think this would be a fun pattern to recreate for a Facebook Live sometime. So I had those. Those were on my um, 
earring tree this morning, so I put them on. I thought they'd be fun and festive. So um, that's the story with these guys. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to turn the camera around, and you're going to see what I see, and let's jump in. Okay, so let me turn everything around, turn it around, turn it around, get you guys going. You're going to see kind of my messy desk across the way, because that's what I've got going on there. There we go. All right. Let me kind of put this out here and then I'll re I'll re organize myself here once the camera is in position. There we go. Sorry, it's a little it's a little shaky shaky here for a moment while I get everything together. All right. There we go. Okay. So, let's go ahead and I see that you guys have a few different questions here on the feed. Right now, I am going to focus on our project that we've got going on, and then I will come back and I'll scroll through some of the questions that you guys have, okay? Um, that way, I keep myself on task, um, and if you guys are patient, I'll go back through and we'll do a quick little Q&A for those of you who have a few questions. How does that work? And thanks, you guys, for watching me. Yesterday I did do a special guest starring on beejacation.com. It was fun. Uh, it was real fun to be back with my buddies over there. Um, and we did some soldering. We had, we had a lot of great fun. So you can always hop on over to Beejacation's um Facebook, uh, not right now because you're watching me, <laughs> but um, but um, you can watch that at your leisure if you are into watching some soldering. Okay, so before I get started on our earring project, I have a new sample, a new project for you guys. This is a Drea made piece. Okay, and this is called Persephone. It's the new goddess bracelet that she did. And you guys, come on. Isn't it amazing? You can find it all on our website at beadshop.com, right? It's the brand new one. Um, and uh, let me see. And you can, uh, I'm going to log in here to the website so you guys can so I can see it so I can see what you guys are also seeing um so Drea did kind of a, a riff on our on our goddess bracelet um and she made the goddess bracelet she turned it into a wrap bracelet let me get a little closer so on beadshop.com, on our website, you know that our those of you who are familiar with our projects, you know that we kind of lay them out in what we call a project map, right? And so, um, oops, that heart's upside down. Let me let me write it so you guys can see it. Okay, um, the uh, project map is always great because you can kind of follow along and see um, kind of the layout, the map of the entire piece, okay? So Drea got really inspired. So I'm gonna go to, if you go to beadshop.com and in our browser bar at the top, there's a little tag called projects, right? We click on projects and a little box comes up with all the different projects. You click on goddess bracelet, right? And it's in the number one position. It's called Persephone. Okay, so Drea, what she did was she pushed the envelope with this goddess bracelet. So not only does it um, include kind of the traditional um, stringing when we just do that single goddess, you know, um, single strand goddess. Um, and I did that back on Free Tip Friday. The video tutorial is linked in the project, but I did the tutorial for just the goddess portion on um, Free Tip Friday on 1-19-2018 uh, of this, this year. 
Um, and then uh, she added some traditional laddering right here, and she used some macrame. And you guys, check out, I'm going to kind of detail each of these, but look at this macrame. Isn't that so fantastic? So let's have, let me start at the beginning. Okay, so um, the, uh, and also on the project, the goddess bracelet, if you scroll all the way down underneath the project map, Drea um, kind of outlines what she's done here. Okay, so we've started um, the goddess, this goddess wrap, as we're calling it. Um, she started this button with a silk wrap, and she used the silk wrap, uh, the um, leather. It's the 0.5 millimeter leather uh, for the base of the wrap. And then she used the pomegranate check roller bead, right, right here. And then she jumped in and uh, then she did a little bit of macrame underneath to kind of hold her KO in place and then she laddered with the KO and you can see she has an alternating uh, design of 11 knots and 5 millimeter rondelles okay and she just kept going and going and going and going and going and then, when she was done, she transitioned to the goddess part. Then, the pomegranate rollers transition into the second part of the wrap. And this is the goddess bracelet technique, right? And so, we do half of the antique uh, silver melons and half of the red Picasso, okay? And then, um, she just kind of alternated them back and forth. And she has that classic goddess bracelet maneuver, which is the um, jump ring here. And this is, I believe, it's the uh, six millimeter jump ring. Let me make sure. Um, let me make sure that's correct. It is, I think, yes, the six millimeter, okay. Then, um, we did the laddering, or not the laddering, sorry, the macrame. And the macrame um, is the regular Ceylon and uh, seed beads. And every other knot here is beaded with the eight and 11 knots. I think it just looks fantastic. So again, if you go to our project page and um, check out the really cool uh, project map and the notes you'll be able to uh, to create your very own. I love it, Drea. I just think it is super, super awesome. Um, and it looks like you guys did too. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Um, let me just let me just click over on my um, computer here real quick and um, then we're going to go to this earring but I'm going to leave this really pretty thing up here for just a second um, and I want to click on over so I can see your questions here thanks for bearing with me Thank you, thank you. Alrighty. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, I did. I did finish with the last pomegranate roller. <laughs> it was good. But this 0.5 millimeter leather, you could use any any color you like. And you can certainly riff off whatever, uh, whatever color, uh, whatever you'd like to do it as well. Okay? And we just use this sweet beach charm. I just put that right uh right at the end so looks good yep you guys did a great great job um okay so let's take a look at the earring portion of what i've got going on here so goddess bracelet chatted discussed all new all exciting i'm going to put that to the side um so let's take a look at some of this brand new 
chain that we've got going on here, okay? The chain is, um, I'm loving, loving the chain. This new chain, it's called um, sandbar, right? And the sandbar chain is, uh, it has a decorative bar like we've got right there. And we've got it linked between with some, just some simple uh, Rolo chain in the center. So it really has an amazing vintage feel to it, right? I dig it so much. I love it, love it, love it. Um, and it comes in four different flavors. We carry it in the antique brass, antique silver, bright gold, and bright silver. Um, it's so, so good. Um, but I think it would be a great, um, it would be a great chain to use as an earring. Be great as a necklace, but you know what? I am, um, I'm an earring kind of a gal. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my necklaces, but I really, really love earrings too. So I'm going to put together kind of a fun little um, idea builder or idea starter for you guys. Um, I've got my bench block here because some of you have asked about our jump rings and can they be hammered? And the question or the answer to that question is yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I have gotten, you can also see in our just in section on beadshop.com, you can see that we've got some new um, jump rings. They're soldered jump rings, and we've got them in two sizes. We've got them in the 8 millimeter, and we've got them in the 6 millimeter, and they come in all kinds of different finishes. These um, soldered rings would be great for the goddess bracelet, for sure, um, but uh, if you want to use regular jump rings as well, you can do that also. But the soldered rings are perfect for hammering. So I thought to add a little bit of interest to this earring that I would go ahead and hammer this ring. Okay? So I've got my bench block in front of me and I've got my chasing hammer. And with light little taps, I'm just going to come in and hammer these down. Now, I don't want to, you, you need to remember, you guys, we're not building a house, right? We're just making jewelry. So we don't want to be too heavy-handed with this, okay? All we want to do is place our ring on the bench block and hammer it flat. And I'm going to show you the contrast between the two in just a second. These jump rings, I'm going to tell you, they are an 18 gauge wire, these soldered rings. So they're nice and heavy, but not so heavy that they're going to drag your, um, your design down. So can you see the difference between the rounded one that's on this side and my flattened one that's to my left? Unhammered, hammered, unhammered, hammered. Okay, I'm, so I'm going to do a couple more. All right, I'm going to put them down on the bench block, get my chasing hammer, and hammer. And just small little taps, right? Let the hammer fall down onto the block. Let the hammer do its work, right? No big deal. Okay, hammer, 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 and then we're going to just take a look at how we connect these. And I'm hammering straight on, okay? And Pat, you're asking to texture them? I could. I could take the ball side of my hammer. And I could come in, sure, and texture them a little bit if I wanted, like that, if I wanted to. But I think for the most part, for ease of what I'm doing today, I'm just going to texture, I'm just going to flatten them. So I've got a couple of flat, um, flat rings there. Let me get them a little closer 
to the camera. There we go, too flat. Hammered, unhammered, okay? We also carry them in a six millimeter, a little bit of a smaller ring. This is the eight millimeter. But notice after I hammer, the eight millimeter spreads itself out just a little bit, it's a little bit bigger. Um, but a six or an eight, they'll both work. And again, you may once in a while when you're hammering have the join pop if it's not soldered, um, you know, if the solder join is weak. But for the most part, I think you're going to have a really good result with the hammering. So, so don't worry about hammering them on the soldered seam or anything like that. They're going to be just fine. Okay, so I've got those guys. So I've got some other jump rings here, uh, the other jump rings that I love, my other favorites. I'm going to pull out some of our four millimeter oval jump rings. Can you see those right there? The oval rings, what I love about oval jump rings is the ring looks like this, right? It's an oval and the join is on the side. So if I uh, put it on chain, thin chain, and the chain is dangling down here, I'm going to have a much um, lower failure rate for my chain to pull out. Um, with a round ring, a lot of times if the join um, it, in the round jump ring, it'll move around to the bottom and that chain will sit on the join. And even just a light tug will pull that chain out of the ring. So um, I think that a, an oval ring is super, super secure. Okay, so let me choose... Um, a chain color of our sandbar chain. I'm going to choose, I'm going to try and get the tape off of this, I'm going to choose this antique brass because I've chosen some antique brass jump rings and we're going to do a little bit of a color, um, color mix here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this link. Can you tell I'm designing on the fly, right? <laughs> That's my favorite about Free Tip Friday. Let's count how many links we've got going on here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve links in between. All right, so I'm going to count two, four, six. That's the middle link. It does look, is it the middle link? Let me make sure. Let me recount. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 10 links there, and then if you count 11 and 12, it's a bigger link that links to the, um, the fancy patterned bar. So I'm going to count 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That should be, yep, that's the center link there. There we go, that's 5, the center link. And I'm going to cut one away. Alrighty. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that ring away with my trusty wire cutters. A little head pin is a great tool to help you kind of isolate that jump ring there. Okay, and I'm going to clip it, cover it up so it doesn't fly up into my face. And then I've got a little um, segment of chain there. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. I'm going to free this guy up. And I'm going to leave the big links on the bottom just for fun. Okay, so we've got these two guys here. And I need to make a decision about where I want this bar to sit. If I want the bar to sit at the bottom of my earring design or at the top? So I don't really know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. So let's figure it out. Let's figure it out together. Let me get a little tighter in there so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to open my ring using my bent chain and my curved and uh, my straight chain nose. And I'm going to put my hammered ring that I hammered earlier on there. Then I'm going to place my bar on there. Okay, then I'm going to close it. And I'm going to move it back and forth, back and forth, pushing together until I close that ring. 
What are we dangling? Someone's asked, Tammy, what are we dangling from this chain? Well, I've got some beads over here that I'm going to show you in just a second. So I've got that bar. Okay. So um, right on cue. Great job, Tammy. I've got some of our six millimeter English cut beads, which I kind of dig, right? I think they're kind of cool. And I like the weight of these. I like how that looks. I also pulled some bugle beads. These are our crystal gray rainbow bugle bead in a 12 millimeter. Okay. So let me line those up. I don't know. Maybe they would sit. I don't know. Maybe they'll sit somewhere there. I don't know. Who knows? We're just designing on the fly. All right. So I know that I like this one dangling there, uh, this English cut in a six millimeter. This is the um, amethyst, the blue amethyst six millimeter English cut. I also have a tiny little um, daisy spacer there, you know, because why not? A daisy spacer, I think a little bit of a daisy spacer always looks nice on the piece. So let's come in and I'm going to wire wrap this closed. Okay, I'm going to bend at a right angle. And notice the head pins that I'm using are also copper. So I'm mixing my metals like crazy. I'm mixing the copper and the brass. On our website, on beadshop.com, we have a lot of skill builders that talk about wire wrapping and um, um, rosary looping and all kinds of wire work. I'm not going to detail it here. I've gone through it uh, a lot of times on these free tip Fridays. Looks like I've got an extra little loop there that I want to get rid of. Um, but you can go right on there and grab those tutorials, okay? If you need a little bit of a refresher with your wire wrapping. You also need to remember, you guys, before you wire wrap that loop closed, we've got to attach it to our chain or else, right? We've got to just make sure it connects or else we're going to have to attach it with the jump ring. And I want this to be a really firm connection, so I want to avoid a jump ring if I can, right? I know, I am such a rebel for mixing metals, right? Let's do it. Let's be rebellious, right? What is that word, that saying that says, well-behaved women have rarely made history? Isn't that true? Well, I agree. And even though most of the time I'm behaved, there's a lot of times when I misbehave as well, because I'm a rebel, <laughs> or at least I play one on TV. Okay, so this is what we've got. We've got this um, wire-wrapped segment at the bottom, this English cut. We've got a segment of the sandbar chain, and let's see if we could add some shorter dangles to this, right? What the heck, you know? I think what I would like to see, maybe, is to fill in up here with another um, another bar. So I'm going to cut again in the middle, two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm going to cut number five, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to cut this in half. And I'm going to cut maybe a couple more of these away because I don't want this to hang in the same direction. But you know, when I cut my chain, I save every little, except when it flies away from me, every single link of chain that I cut away, I try and save it because I always um, I always end up using them. I get one of our little containers like this, our little storage, and I throw all my little bits of chain and stuff in there. So it really, um, it really works well, I think, for that. And then let me grab one of our tiny little oval jump rings, these four millimeters, and let's attach it, okay? 
So I hope that this view is tight enough for you guys that you guys can see it. Um, I always appreciate when we're doing something right, your thumbs up and your hearts, uh, so I know that things are looking good to you. Um, we also appreciate every share that you give this video um, because it helps this content reach more people, more jewelry makers just like you. Um, we really, really um, appreciate it. So thank you, thank you for all of those likes and shares. Okay, so I've got this guy here, and I'm going to cut off, I don't know, maybe maybe two lengths, okay? And I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going to cut at the third link. So this sandbar link has two loops up at the top and two loops up at the bottom. Actually, it has one loop up at the top and two at the bottom, but that's okay. And I'm talking the small links the slightly larger links that connect the chain to the sandbar um, are intact on both of them. Okay. So um, let me get a head pin. These um, gray rainbow bugle beads come in kind of a gray rainbow. I'm going to pick out the I don't know, maybe the grayer tones, they come in a kind of a bronzer one, more bronze or more gray. So I'll choose this guy. And let's see how a daisy spacer looks with that. I don't know if it'll look, oh, it looks okay. And I'm going to, instead of, well, maybe I will wire wrap it. Let's see. I'm going to bend that wire at an angle. Get my round nose plier here up and over. Up and over. Yeah, I love these bugle beads. Um, they're a little, they can be a little um, delicate. So you want to be careful, especially with these longer ones. They can crack pretty easily, but they're not terribly dear. They're not terribly expensive. So you can, if you crack one, just get another one out. Let me add this to the chain, you guys, and see, do a tester and see how that looks. Because I can always cut off a little more chain. I feel like this length, it's a little long, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut away those two links. Let's cut them away. Let's, let's rid them. Goodbye, links, and add the dangle again, and check our length. Yeah, much better. A real, really amazing how those two little lengths make a big difference. Okay, great. And then I'm going to wire wrap this guy, and then I'll repeat it on the other side. It'll go a little bit faster on the other side because... Um, on the second one because uh, we've fleshed out our design. So let's go ahead and wire wrap that from the top of the loop to the top of the daisy and we'll go ahead and clip away our excess. Bam! Okay. Then I didn't wrap it completely closed because I need a tiny little bit of space to get my bent chain nose in there and bend down if I can hold on to it with my big fingers if I can bend it down just so it doesn't catch on anything there we go just like that okay great so now um, I'm going to do uh, the other one. And yeah, I could have done the daisy spacer on the bottom of the bugle. Um, that would have worked too. I don't know why I just went for the top. You could also have put a little round bead or a little something else there, you know. The world is your jewelry oyster, so you decide what you like. I'm going to make this one match. So I'm going to go ahead and clip away my extra chain, get my oval, get rid of all this stuff, get my oval jump ring in place, open that bad boy up, 
with one bent and one straight chain nose. Attach. I said attach. I said, there we go. Attach. And close. Close her up. Okay. There we go. And let's add our other our other bugle. Okay. Uh, bugle. There it is. And I used a slightly gray one, so I put that guy on. Let me put it on. Let me get that daisy spacer, a true staple in my designing world, my bead design world. Bend at an angle, up and over the top, down and underneath. I get super excited at this point where I just want to wire wrap it closed, but we cannot. We need to add it to our dangle and wrap it. Okay, wrap it. Yes, perfect. Clip it away. Clip away that extra without clipping anything else. That's the trick. Can I get it? Sorry, I have to get a little closer to my eyes, you guys. I can't I can't see that far to clip. There we go. I got it. And just bend that little end of the wire in. So let's take a look at our earring and see how she's shaping up, shall we? There we go. I don't think that looks too bad if I do say so myself, right? Um, for an ear wire or for a closure, uh, I just grabbed our ear wire, uh, an ear wire style that I like a lot. This has a little bit of an Art Deco feel to it, doesn't it? This kind of link really feels Art Deco-y to me. Um, I'm going to just see how this looks with just our little um, uh, copper niobium ear wire here. Uh, just see how it looks there. Um, niobium is very ear friendly. Oh yeah, you guys, let me see. I need to hang it on something. I love this. I really love it if I do say so myself. Let me see if I can, it's kind of hard for you guys to see with this camera angle. Let me see if I can make the, the picture a little bit wider there. There we go. Can you guys see how that hangs? I might have to put it in my ear uh, later so you guys can see it. It clusters up just a little bit, but I really, really like it. Um, I think it does have a good Art Deco feeling to it. You could um, break the chain up here and add another bead. I could have added, you know, a couple of small beads up at the top there. I could keep going with another section of chains on both sides, but I kind of like how these little bugles dangle. I might also want to add a little ball or something at the bottom. I don't know. It's not too bad. I know I'm casting around. You read my mind, um, Ginger. I'm looking for my mug and I don't have it sitting here on my desk, which is kind of irritating. Uh, it was kind of irritating me. Let me get my, here we go. I've got something. I've got something to hang it on. Let me see if I can grab it here. Um, I have this little Lucite purse on my desk that is kind of a catch-all for all of the junk that I'm not sure where to put it. So let me get this into the shot and I can dangle it right off the side. Let me move my little things. Let me get my little, my little bag and see if I can hang this. Oh, the edge is too thick. Let me open this up. I just need my coffee mug. That's all I need, right? There we go. There we go. That's okay. There we go. You can kind of see it hang a little bit, sort of. There we go. And I'll have Karen take a photo of these guys, and uh, we'll put it up on the blog so you guys can see it. 
But I think um, hammering these jump rings is a great way to, um, to kind of add a little bit of interest to your designs. Let me take this out of my, my purse here. I need to never, ever um, not have my coffee mug with me, right? But let me do this and this. Oh, Brandon brought it in with me. She saw me struggling. Brandon's all, for God's sakes, get your coffee mug. There we go. That's the best thing to show it. Yes. Perfect. Look at that. I think it looks awesome. All right. Cool. Coolio. Turn a little bit more towards you. Okay. This bead, uh, the bead on the end in the middle um, lin is our English cut, our six millimeter English cut. So let me uh, go over everything I've used here. Okay, so you guys uh, have an idea of what we've used. Of course, everything can be found on beadshop.com, of course. Um, and um, what I used here, I used the 6mm English cuts on these guys. I've used our new um, kind of Art Deco style chain called Sandbar. I used it in the antique brass finish. I then used our 8 millimeter um, soldered rings and I hammered them using my bench block and my chasing hammer. Okay. Then for the dangles at the bottom I used our 12 millimeter crystal gray rainbow bugle beads and I used our 1.5 millimeter head pins in antique copper. And of course, to attach everything, I used our 4 millimeter oval jump rings, um, also in the antique brass. And we, I kind of mixed my metals with the antique brass and the copper. And then I finished it off with the ear wire here. Um, with the um, niobium ear wire with the coil, the little copper colored one. Um, and I think it's fun. It really does have an Art Deco inspired feeling to it. Um, I think you guys will have a lot of fun working with, um, with this new chain. Yeah, you know, the soldering process for these rings um, is pretty sturdy. Um, Ginger was commenting, you would think that the jump rings would open up. And, you know, as you're hammering, a couple of them might uh, open, um, but the majority of them probably will not. So um, if you have one that opens, well, just toss it to the side and try it again. You should be, um, you should be in, in, in good shape with these guys. Um, oh, yep, yeah, Gita, I'm sorry. Thank you for your correction. I have six millimeter... Um, on the brain. Let me double check here just real quick and make sure that I have the English cut size um, correctly, uh, size correctly. We have so many millimeters of, um, <laughs> of beads <laughs> that I can't keep them all. Yes, we have 8 and 10 millimeter. So these are the small ones. I'm sorry. These are the 8 millimeters. So I'm sorry to uh, have misspoke. And of course, yes, I use the daisy spacers. Don't forget those guys. I use the uh, daisy spacers in the copper. Okay. So, so that, you guys, uh, does it for this design. Um, I did promise that I would scroll back through and give you, uh, get some um, questions that you guys might have. So let me go on um, here and uh, let me jump on our feed on my computer. It's easier for me to see your questions. And um, let me scroll back and I can answer a few more of them. If you have another question, drop it in the comments now, and I will uh, I'll answer those. So let me get to our video here real quick. Um, kind of a shortcut to that would be you go to beadshop.com, our Facebook page, beadshop.com, and 
um, you can go right to our video tab on the side there, and that's where you see um, the live feed come up. Okay, and I see everybody's comments, so let me, can I go back that far? Gosh, let me see, maybe I can't. Maybe I can't go back that far. Let me see if I can do it on my phone. Let me see. Sorry, you guys. I may have spoken too quickly. I know that I saw one um, in the comments earlier um, that uh, talked about that you guys were asking... Um, let me see here. No. That someone was asking about um, laddering, right? Um, uh, which thread you should use for laddering. Um, my laddering thread, we've got really great skill builders on laddering over at beadshop.com. So if you go to our project page and you find our tricks to laddering um, uh, project, click on it and you can download the tricks to laddering handout. And the Tricks to Laddering handout will really give you a whole lot of um, great options about what to use. And I see, Kathy, you said best thread for laddering with 6 millimeter tile beads. So it's a great question. If you decide to um, just do traditional laddering, which is that laddering, you know, that kind of goes back and forth, back and forth this way, uh, with one thread on one side, one thread on the other, I would go ahead probably and either use Tough Cord 2 or Tough Cord 3, or I would use Micro Ceylon. That would work really, really well. Um, I think those will both work. If you're doing the infinity stitch where you're doing a figure eight and you have your thread through a needle, then I would use either um, the KO or the Superlon D, um, and, um, or the Ceylon D. Um, those would both work very, very well, and you could um, use those doubled through a needle. But uh, again, go to our Tricks to Laddering handout. You'll find so much information um, in there. And then it also depends with your laddering. Like if you're using beads that have kind of similar hole sizes, then you can get away with one size of thread. What Drea used for this one, I'm going to click over and tell you what she used. I'm going to get to the project here because I don't want to tell you anything that's incorrect. Um, but Drea, for this laddering, if I'm not mistaken, she, um, she used uh, Kao for this uh, to ladder. And the size 11s um, and the 5 millimeter rondelles have, you know, the holes aren't too tiny, so the KO actually works really, really well. Okay? Uh, but tough cord, I also love tough cord for the laddering also. We really, really love it. Uh, we love it here. And let me click back and see. It looked like I, have a, I had a couple more questions before I sign off. Let me get back to our video. Um, uh... I can't, my questions are kind of eluding me a little bit today. There we go. Here we go. I see it here. Um, oh, Donna, did we not use spaghetti jump ranks? No, I didn't. That was a little joke from our, uh, that gag reel that we did with Beejacation. Yes. Um, and ginger uh, metal stampings. Right now we're sticking to beads. So um, Beejacation is a great uh, resource for those metal stamping items, so I would jump on over to our friends over there for all the info you need on stamping. Um, okay, well, I'm going to turn this camera around. I'm going to turn this camera around, <laughs> and we will sign off here. So bear, bear with me while I do that. There we go. Bring it around. You can kind of see my messy desk all my stuff. There I am. There we go. Let me close, the, whoops, close this up. All righty. There we go. Fix my hair a little bit. There we are. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today on this Free Tip Friday. It was a fun day. Um, 
and it was a fun project to share with you. And I think these earrings, they look pretty good on, I think. They're really fun, and they're super light. These feel really, really great. Um, well, I can't wait. Next free tip, or next um, Wednesday, Facebook Live, we have a really great one planned. Of course, Emily's back with me, so she'll be here with me on Wednesday. And I'm doing a super old school project that uh, one of my favorite classes from beadshop.com, uh, when beadshop.com was actually a brick and mortar when we were the bead shop uh, in Palo Alto, California. It is a wire classic for me. We've got some new products that we're debuting with this wire classic, so you're not going to want to miss it. Um, open your newsletters this weekend, you guys, because we are having a check glass bead sale that you're not going to want to miss. And uh, I think that's it. I think Free Tip Friday is a wrap for today. Thank you so much. Thanks for hanging in there with our little bit of shipping delay, but I promise your orders are being processed and sent out as fast as we can do it. So again, super appreciate, super appreciate you, and I will see you Wednesday on Facebook Live. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye.